Lions don't eat roadkill, guys. There's a common misconception, and I've seen it online, I've seen it in person, that thinks that if a guy goes to Thailand or the Philippines or travels around the world, that he's actually going there to have sex with all these different women that are prostitutes, and that is simply not the case. A guy like me, why would I need to pay? I'm like so anti-gold digger, why would I need to pay for hookers and stuff like that? In a place like Thailand, there are so many people that are traveling from all over the world, from Europe, Australia, Brazil, you know, all these different places like that, um, you know, that it's simply, you know, actually one of the biggest worries for me was when I would run across girls that were Thai, I actually felt kind of bad for them because there is so much prostitution in Thailand that I almost felt like that they were being prejudged. I was kind of judging. I'm like, wait a minute, is this chick a prostitute? Is she a lady boy? I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> um, so I definitely, I wasn't talking to Thai girls to any capacity really other than if they were working at, you know, some hotel or something like that to, you know, pay for my room, that kind of thing. I never talked to, tried to pick up any Thai girls or anything like that um, when I was in Thailand. And it was more about hanging out, uh, being there, you know, for all these chicks that are from other parts of the world, Sweden, Norway, Finland, the United States. Um, and actually the girls that you meet there that are from the United States that are over in Thailand, they're kind of the more adventurous kind of girl that is willing to travel and go outside of their front doorstep. Uh, a lot of people have a hard time traveling. I know from the Midwest that, you know, it's like a big deal to go down to Florida. And a lot of people have kind of done that to some capacity, but there's a lot of people that I know who are like in Indiana, Ohio, those kind of places that have never been out to California, actually. Uh, so going to Thailand is just a far, far stretch beyond their imagination. Uh, so they don't know what to think if a guy, you know, goes over there. It's They get all kinds of different thoughts. And I even had a chick that was from Houston asking me that, like that I'm like, oh, you know, I probably went into these you know, jack shacks over there in Thailand or something. They're giving these hand jobs, these massage parlor kind of places. I never even got any massage in Thailand, actually, partially because I was wanting to avoid that. I was like, you know, if I'm going to get a massage, like I want a legit sports massage, you know, not some kind of like little rub down and then getting like, you know, jacked off and stuff like that. So it's just kind of funny though. And I see with some of the guys that are produce red pill content that are, you know, let's say they're, they're, you know, guys in the African American community. It's pretty funny. Um, they really kind of go on about this, about the passport gang and getting your passport. And I definitely agree. And for them, and I've heard this other places too, and, and it all depends kind of your background and stuff, but black guys have a lot of success over in Japan and South Korea and Colombia and Brazil and all these kind of things. But I think just in general, you know, if you're different, uh, it's something unique. It, they're curious about it. Uh, women kind of treat you differently, maybe in these different countries, the people that are that are there, um, you know, that are local there. But one of my worries, too, about chicks that are, you know, from Thailand, from the Philippines, from Brazil, that kind of stuff, you often worry about, are they ultimately partially trying to get at your first world passport, your premier passport from the United States, Canada, Australia, that kind of thing. So in the back of my mind, that is kind of a worry. Uh, I have seen some of these situations where guys have gotten married to a chick in the Philippines and brought her back over to the United States. And then as soon as they meet the criteria of being here for whatever it is, four or five years, and then they end up divorcing them and, you know, basically take half of everything and try to take the kids and they're in this big custody battle and it's a complete nightmare. So I don't necessarily, uh, encourage, you know, marrying a chick from those countries, but you know, maybe a chick who's in a country with a fairly equivalent passport, you know, South Africa. Well, I, I really can't you know South Africa's question mark, Australia, obviously Canada, the UK, those kind of passports, the United States. Um, but I just think, I don't know if you guys ran into this as well, where, you know, women specifically shame you for wanting to travel, especially if you're a single male and, um, act like that it's all about some sort of prostitution related thing. Um, and obviously like, okay, if you go to Thailand and this, that kind of stuff, 
that there is a lot of that stuff going on, but that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that, that you're engaging in that. And, and quite honestly, like I've always, and that's one of the things that I recommend guys, even, you know, here in the United States is that there's certain types of girls you never really want to date or even be serious about, you know, to any level is any of these girls that have hoard themselves out to any capacity, whether it's been through a sugar daddy website or they were a cam girl or they were a stripper or that kind of stuff, because they're always going to be messed up in the head and they're going to have a very, very odd relationship with money and relationships. It's never going to be, you know, what you, what you feel like it should be kind of thing. So Anyway, what do you guys think about that? Please leave a comment below and subscribe to the YouTube channel. See you guys later.